Hey everybody, and welcome to our interview with the Master Session, brought to you by Concept Art World. Uh, you can check out their fantastic website at www.conceptartworld.com. The website features lots of fantastic artists, as well as an amazing art community where people go for inspiration and networking. And I totally don't have it up. I'm so sorry. Here we go. <laughs> sorry. Um, so here's the here's the awesome website. Um, I know that CG Hub kind of sadly went down. Um, but this is a new website that everyone needs to check out and um, get involved with because it's an upcoming um, new That's awesome. Cool. I haven't heard of this one. Concept yeah, I haven't. I actually haven't either. <laughs> so this is okay. new. Cool. Um, yeah. So check it out. Uh, also, we're going to be um, opening our registration for our 2D Academy on July 3rd. That's this Thursday. So um, be sure to check out the website and sign up for classes if you're interested. Um, and we also have the amazing Daryl Mandrick uh, for our interview. It's so great to have you. So let's start off. Uh, tell us how you got to where you are. Uh, let, let me give you a let me give you the presentation thing here. Hold on. Oh, okay. And there you go. <laughs> there you go. Is it sharing my screen now? Uh, yes. Well, I think you have to click a button, and then it should share it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Can we? Can everybody work. see that? I see it. Looks like it's showing up. More or less. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks for the, uh, the intro. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Daryl Mandrick, and uh, I'm a freelance artist. I, I work out of uh, Vancouver, Canada, and uh, work mainly in the uh, games industry at the moment. Um, although I've done all kinds of stuff, uh, books and um, <clears throat> a little bit of uh, uh, board games and that kind of stuff. Um, Let's see. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, I've been doing it for for a while. Um, I started uh, seriously getting into art about uh, 1998, 1999, and uh, I went to school briefly. Um, became a professional working artist uh, in 1999, and worked at a few studios, uh, notably Disney and Electronic Arts. And uh, currently freelance, and I've been doing that for uh, about the past four years. So, yeah, I mean that's kind of the, the nutshell. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll start by uh, just showing you guys like a quick um, slideshow, uh, just of work, and I can kind of talk over it and answer any questions you guys have. Um, so. Yeah, this is just kind of like a mishmash of stuff from over the years, uh, from various projects. Uh, some stuff from Turox, some stuff from Tron. Uh, there's some uh, freelance stuff in here, some book covers, uh, just general concept art done for pitches and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, and I'd just like to say, like any any questions you guys have, just uh, you know, feel free. Um, just to just to Ask me anything, and I'll I'll do my best to answer, and and hopefully, uh, you know, we can uh, <laughs> have a good afternoon. I guess. All right. <laughs> Looks like go. we got a question though. Um, <laughs> Great. So someone's asking, uh, what what setup do you use to do your live digital figure studies? Oh, okay. If, if you um, if you do that. <laughs> yeah, um, I just use a uh, just a regular laptop. Um, nothing too fancy. It's like a just a Sony laptop and a and a really old, uh, beat up Wacom three into us. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so no, nothing fancy. You know, I'm, I'm looking at um, maybe getting one of those crazy new Cintiqs you can draw on. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can just hold it in your lap and draw on it. Those are yeah. Awesome. Those are cool. Um, but you know, I've sort of come around uh, the last few years um, just to working a lot more. On the on the actual tablet rather than the Cintiq, um, just because I find that painting on the tablet uh, gives you a different feeling than actually painting on the Cintiq. So I sort of like prefer uh, the the tablet for the light drawings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just uh, I just purchased myself. I just purchased a Unova, which is like half the price of the Cintiq. Um, oh, nice. And it's literally changed everything about my art, but I. I uh I gotta say like coming from a tablet to this to this type of Cintiq is amazing. Like it's just it's it's really fun. Yeah, yeah. Cintiqs are fantastic for um, like anything line related, mm -hmm. anything where you have to like make really accurate lines or use your wrist a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that 
uh, working on the tablet sort of lends itself more to uh, painting and just seeing big blocks of shapes and values. Um, if that makes sense, because your hand's not in the way and you just kind of like exactly. you have a one yeah. relationship with the screen. True. Yeah. That was the one thing that was a hindrance is like you have, you're painting on the screen, but it's like your hand's in the way. And you're like, wait, right. I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> or the pen nib's in the way. Right, right. It's also a lot easier when you're using a Cintiq to get sucked into, you know, doing details in a certain area. You know, kind of forget about the picture as a whole. Right. Um, that's what I found anyway, so. Uh, so yeah, here's some studies. Um, I tend to do like a lot of studies whenever, whenever I have free time. I'll just sit down and you know take a picture off the internet or uh, take a, a DVD still or something like that and just try and uh, paint it up just for practice. So I, I find that helps a lot. Very cool. Uh, so do you well, have stuff a... Is, Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask, no, okay. a, do you have, like, like it looks like you're using a lot of different types of, like, brushes in some of your stuff. Like, do you make your own brushes in Photoshop? Like, or do, do the companies kind of give you sets or, like? Um, most of my brushes I've just kind of, like, found online over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I'll just find, like, a brush pack somebody post up, and I'll just kind of take what I like from that and combine it with what I already have. Um, so I've just sort of like taken a lot just from just from found brushes online. Um, every now and then I'll you know just experiment. I'll try and make a a brush, uh, but I I really do most of my painting with just you know a few really basic brushes. You know like a like a round brush, like a square brush, and like something that gives a little bit of texture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean once in a while for like if I need a certain effect or like a, a certain look, maybe I'll use a, a custom brush. Um, yeah. But I'd say like 90% of the time when I'm working, it's just like standard round, <laughs> like standard round brush. <laughs> um, yeah. Although I've been experimenting a lot more with uh, like custom shapes and, and uh, stuff like that and some textures, like photo textures and that, yeah, yeah. that kind of stuff, I think, just to try and like broaden my, my, my oh. toolbox, I guess. I love this picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it supposed to be Arnold? Because it looks like it looks like Conan Arnold. Yeah, it's totally from from. Uh, oh my god, that's area. amazing. Yeah. Um, so we have a couple questions. Um, sure. Someone's asking if you can show a piece and explain some of the ideas and philosophy that went through the, to the final image. Um, for instance, like the last of the invaders, or. Um, okay. Interesting. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me. Uh, Maybe I'll bring that image up. Uh, I think I have it here. Somewhere. I think he said it was an older piece, I guess. Yeah. I think he's I think he's uh I think he's very familiar with your with your work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's flattering. It's saying um, that's how he learned of you was from this piece. Oh cool. Yeah. Okay, so sorry, what was the question again? Uh, the question was, uh, can you show a piece and explain some of the ideas and philosophy that went through to the final image? Yeah, um, so this one was done for a contest, um, CG Talk. Uh, it's like one of, the, one of their earlier contests, and uh, the theme was uh, space opera. So for this one, like, I really wanted to, I don't know, just try and cap, like, encapsulate in one image like a very... Uh, dramatic, like epic, sort of video game moment, you know, just captured in one one image. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know. Like, I started out like with something completely different, and this one, uh, because I worked on it over a long period of time, it just it really evolved in a lot of different ways. And eventually, like, I just started putting all these different elements. They, they just kind of started working together, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I tried to carry that feeling of uh, just like desperation and epicness, like all the way to the end. You know, like from even though like the picture went through different iterations, I wanted to keep those emotions intact. If that makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Does that make any sense? <laughs> no, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it sounds like a quite a process. <laughs> yeah, this um, one was uh, like especially because this was like. Uh, this was like a long time ago already. This was 2004, I think, um, and I was still sort of 
you know, getting my process down and like trying to still figure out painting uh, on the computer. Right. Um, so for me, this is like a really ambitious image at the time, you know, and it took a lot of like a lot of hours and a lot of a lot of time to to make it. Um, so the entire thing was like a learning process as well, you know, That's while trying cool. to keep while trying to keep in mind like all the ideas that you're trying to put into the image, you're also almost like teaching yourself about how to create on the computer. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough that it sort of came together in the end, but yeah, the entire time I was doing it, I was like, oh my god, like <laughs> this thing might just collapse like under the weight of it all, you know? Oh no. Yeah. But. So um, <laughs> I have a question, like on the, on the subject of this, um, what would you suggest for people that are trying to get into becoming more polished with their digital painting? I guess it just sounds mainly like putting just straight man hours into practicing, but do you have any right. tips and, and suggestions on how to stick with it and, and keep going? Um, yeah, I mean, you're basically right, you know, like it is um, just a lot of uh, time and hours. Um, you know, I think a big thing about getting better at art is just uh, mileage, you know, yeah. just doing it over and over again and, and being consistent um, in terms of like, you know, getting frustrated and that kind of stuff and wanting to sort of take a break. And I think that's natural and everybody goes through that. Um, you know, I, I know I certainly do. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, sometimes it is good to take a break and just go outside and walk around and, and whatever. But I think the problem starts when, you know, your breaks turn into like weeks or months, and you're like, oh, I'll just get, I'll get back to art later or something. You know, it's like, no, you have to, you know, take a break and then recognize when it's time to sit down and work, right? Right. And and uh, just keeping that consistent and um, yeah, just trying to, you know, vary the work up as well mm -hmm. uh, is is pretty important. You know, like if you're just constantly doing the same thing or studying the same thing over and over again, like it can lead to burnout pretty quick. You know, like, so maybe, you know, one day you're studying anatomy and the next day you're studying, you know, colors or something and then, you know, take a break and then maybe the weekend it's like time for lighting studies or, or whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, well, that's a so good I think idea. Var variety will help, you know. It definitely helps me anyway. You know, oh, yeah. Because I find, like, I have a very short attention span and, uh, you know, if I'm just constantly you know, bashing my head against a problem, that's usually no fun. <laughs> you know, I want, I want to try and think differently and try different things, so. Yeah, that's awesome. These are these are uh, actually Farmville. Um, Who are they? For? I was going to ask if they were, because they yeah. look Farmville. I'm like, is this Farmville? <laughs> these are so cute. Yeah, those are fun. They were, they were like something totally different for oh me. Oh, my goodness. But, um, I actually learned like so much just from doing those. Really? Just, oh, my gosh, yeah, that's so just awesome. Because yeah, just because you know you got to work in a certain style, um, and so there's certain constraints on the art, and you gotta you gotta figure out what make that what makes that style tick, and kind of like reverse engineer it, and then put it back on the page. So just that whole process is like uh, it was a great learning process that, that taught me a lot. Right. Um, so we have a, a question um, about your um, about your anatomy and figure drawings. Um, Okay. They want to know how, like, what was your way to study anatomy and gesture, and how hmm. do you personally handle the foreshortening, um, like, with that being said, in your paintings and stuff? Okay, interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, how do I study anatomy? Um, well, I started, uh, I started by just like copying comic books and stuff like that, um, and then as I started doing more figure drawing. Um, you know, I started looking at real anatomy books, right? So uh, I think like my favorite anatomy book is uh, Bridgman. I'm sure you guys know Bridgman, mm -hmm. um, but he breaks it down into like like everything very uh, blocky forms, you know, that interlock together. Um, so he's he's definitely a big inspiration there. Um, but a good way to learn anatomy is just just to actually go to life drawing a lot and just study it, right? And just you know, don't worry about lighting, don't worry about shadows, but just try and try and figure out where the muscles go and like how they connect together and that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And just focus on it. Um, 
and again, it's back to like the mileage thing, you know, like the more you do life drawing, the better your anatomy is going to get and uh, the more natural it becomes, you know, so instead of just sitting there struggling to draw like, you know, like an arm and a torso for an hour, you can just kind of like quickly, you know, block it in just a gesture mm -hmm. and just have it and then you don't get frustrated with it and, and you have more energy to devote to, to like the rest of your composition, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So for me, I mean, that's that's sort of how I look at it. You know, I just I try and go life down as much as I can. I try and, you know, memorize the anatomy and try and make it um, just second nature. So it's so it's just in my muscle memory, right? Like if, right. I, if I need to draw like a leg or an arm or something, it just, it's just there. I don't have to think about it. But that requires, you know, a lot of hours, <laughs> for, for me anyway, to, you know, go into to the studio and actually just sitting down and doing it. And sorry, there was a part about foreshortening. Uh, yeah, someone was asking, uh, like, how how do you tackle it? Like, when you're doing your paintings, like, if an arm is stretching out towards the camera or f towards the view, um, mm -hmm. you know, how, like, what are some, you know, do you have any advice on how to, you know, get that feeling of, of depth? Right. Um, you know, I guess just at a basic level, you got to sort of, you know, just break it down into like simple 3D forms, you know, like if for example, if it's an arm coming towards you, then you want to like just basically divide it into like the simplest forms, like a tube, uh, you know, a sphere for the elbow or something. And if you get that down on paper right, you can start to build on top of it. Right? Yeah, like that image. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you look at that, it's, it's very simple. It's just like the hand is a cube, the forearm is just like a, like a, a elongated cone, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you know they're placed in space in such a way that you know the overlap is there that it pushes it back, right? Um, so you want to really keep in mind overlapping forms. You know, make sure make sure that that overlap is there and it reads. Um, and uh, and what, what else is a good tip? Like maybe if you're painting, like watch your edges. You know, like edges on like the form that is farther away f uh, from the camera are going to be softer, right? So if you have a fist coming towards you, um, you know, you can usually paint those edges a little a little harder, a little sharper, you know, just so it pops off the page a bit. Um, I also find it's also good to uh, exaggerate a little bit. You know, if you've got some foreshortening going on, you can you can usually push it a little bit uh, farther than, than maybe what you see, you know, just to get that effect, right? Yeah. You know, it's just like in comic books, you know, they like have like the huge fist coming at you. Right, like, look at any like Jack Kirby stuff. You know, it's just like giant fist, and then like little shapes behind it overlapped to push that depth. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Your figure work is amazing. Oh my gosh, really good. Thank you. Yeah, I really Thanks. like it. Um, speaking of comic books, um, do you mm. have any like books or artists um, or movies that really influenced you? <laughs> oh my god. I'm sure. I'm sure. You, <laughs> that's kind of you know kind of a funny question, but uh, like. Yeah. Which ones? Uh, Let's see. Uh, do you want the books, artists, or all the things? Or all, all of them. <laughs> all the things. <laughs> Every single influence. Uh, wow. Well, okay. wh whatever you whatever you feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's some there's some big ones, you know, in my life for sure. Like, uh, you know, in terms of movies, you know, like I guess the original Star Wars films were probably number one. You know, when I like I was six or seven when I saw them, and they've definitely just left a mark. You know. Yeah. Um, I really like, you know, that gritty sort of like used industrial look that those original films had. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see, like when I was younger I was into comics a lot, you know, so definitely comics were, were where I sort of learned how to draw just by copying, you know, like X-Men and Conan and that kind of stuff. Um, and I was also like really uh, into D&D. I was like a total D&D nerd for a while. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, um, you know, like a lot, <clears throat> a lot of the art that goes with D&D, &D, like from, uh -huh. those, uh, from the old TSR artists, you know, like Larry Elmore and uh, Keith Parkinson, Jeff Easley, like those guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys were really, really big early influences. Like I remember copying uh, like <clears throat> Larry Elmore paintings and uh, trying to figure out how they did things. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's... And like artistic influences, there's there's a lot, you know, like like I mentioned the D and D guys, but there's also 
you know, there's so many others like Mike Mignola. I love his stuff. There's yeah. uh, like digital digital guys, like so many digital guys now. You know, like the first time I saw Craig Mullins, I was like, oh my god. You know, like I remember it was like I don't know, ten years ago or something, but. I felt like a caveman looking at the Mona Lisa, you know, you're like, this is possible on a computer, oh my god, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, I don't know, maybe let's see if there's more recent stuff, like, recently, like, maybe films like, um, like Equilibrium, like, I really like that movie. Oh, um, Equilibrium's so good. Yeah, yeah, um, oh, what else? Any new movies that, that you, uh, that you like? Any oh sure, yeah, lots. Like, uh, uh, I really like Pacific Rim. Uh, yeah, that was that's like, cool. a favorite of mine last year. Um, you know, I thought it was basically just like an anime come to life, right? Right. So for me, it, yeah, it just kind of hit all the right notes. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm, that's about it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to like the new Conan movie. <laughs> but there's a new Conan uh, movie coming out. Yeah, I think Schwarzenegger's what? making another one. So. Oh my god. I, know, I, lo I, I actually really like Conan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to uh, read a lot of um, Savage Sword of Conan, you know, the magazine. Yeah. So uh, John uh, Buscema, or Buscema, I'm not sure how to say his name, but um, he's like one of my favorite artists, just amazing, like pen and brushwork, right? Nice. Uh, and his figures are, are, I think, a big influence on me too, just the way that he <clears throat> draws action. and. Uh, yeah, everything's just very uh, solid, you know. I yeah. Really like that look. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, cool. Any other questions? Cool. Uh, I don't see any, but uh, I just want to let everyone know if you have questions for uh, for Daryl, please ask. We'll be happy to answer, and well, he'll be happy to answer. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anything. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, some uh, uh, some art for a MOBA. Um, it's called Guardians of Middle Earth. Oh, nice. Uh, this is a personal piece. Do you play many uh, many video games? <laughs> I wish. Uh, I love video games, but you know, unfortunately, there's not not a whole lot of time in the day. Um, and I'm happy if I can get you know 20 minutes at the end of the day to to boot something up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, when I was younger, I definitely played a lot more. Um, you know, I find like I buy more than I play. You know, just oh no, <laughs> Steam, <laughs> like those Steam sales. summer sales or whatever. You know, it's like oh, I'll just get this. It's two bucks. <laughs> it just sits on my hard drive. I never even touch it, right? Yeah, um, that so, happens to me all the time. Like, I'll, yeah, sometimes I'll just buy a game just to check it out. Like check out the art. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I don't know what game was that? Um, Devil May Cry. The yeah. New one. Like, I just bought that because the environments look so good. You know, it's like one yeah. of the best looking. I think some of, like, those levels are some of the best environmental art I've ever seen in the game. They're just gorgeous. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, um, so I'll, I'll just, like, play for 10 minutes, check out the art, and, you know, <laughs> put in a cheat code to check out the levels or whatever, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, someone's asking a really good question about, um, mm -hmm. about kind of what we were talking about before we started, but how do you manage your freelance career? And... Do you work from mm. home or from the office, and how do you stay organized with it? Mm. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, I work out of a, a home office, I guess you can call it. Um, it's just a, a bedroom in my basement that's been converted to an office. Uh, I can't afford office rent, so <laughs> so it's uh, the basement for me. And uh, yeah, how do I manage my freelance time? Is a question, or or just Sorry, what was the question again? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, the question was uh, like, how do you stay organized with your uh, with your stuff and and manage your mm -hmm. your time and manage everything? Manage my time. Yeah, um, that's a good question because like, I found um, just doing this for several years that like one of my biggest problems is um, filling up my schedule, right? Like not. <clears throat> not having enough work to keep me busy, you know, even though I could have taken on more work, like, I, I get scared, and, <laughs> and I'll just be like, oh, I can't take on any, any more, because I don't know if I have enough time to get this other thing done, right? Right. So, but I think over over time, you sort of develop a sense of, like, how long things take, um, and then, 
it becomes easier to uh, kind of filter the jobs through that. Uh, so what I try and do now is, uh, you know, I'll try and take as much as I can to, to fill my schedule. And um, because what usually ends up happening is like you take a job and you work on it for a bit, you send it off, and uh, you know if there's feedback or or people need to look at it on the other end, then that process can take it could could take like as short as an hour, but it could take days as well, right? You just don't know. Um, so I've had like a lot of uh, instances where I've sent off work and then I'll just be sitting around, you know, mm -hmm. basically doing nothing, waiting for feedback. Um, where I'm like, well, I could just be working on another job right now, you know. So I try and take small jobs to like kind of fill those gaps because I know they're going to happen. Um, and even if I'm really busy, then I'll just I'll shift my hours to the evening. You know, maybe I'll work all day on one project and then at night I'll just have dinner um, and then just work for like three or four hours before bed on something else. You know. Um, so freelance is good that way because it's very flexible. You know, if you're in a studio, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's definitely. I think managing your time freelance is something. Uh, that you sort of learn to do over time. You know, I know when I started, it was it's a lot harder, definitely. But you get better at it. You know, the more you do it, the more comfortable you you become, and cool. you really start to like zero in on how much time something should take. You know, mm -hmm. like if I'm doing like a page of like character sketches, like I know like okay, this will take maybe a day, right? Like I just know from experience. Um, but if you're doing like a crazy like key art piece of imagery or something, like you can safely like budget like three or four days to that, right? Maybe even more, depending on what you're doing. So, yeah, you you just develop a sense, I think. Cool. Yeah. Um, I do have another another really good question. Um, so someone just someone just asked, and they just graduated from college with their uh, Master of Fine Arts. Um, nice. He spent time in college studying oil uh, illustration, and yeah. um, he's experienced digital painting, but it's mostly oil, but with that being said, um, do you think that he should be developing new, a new digital portfolio, and what's the best way to approach studios as a new illustrator, like, you know, mm. trying to get into the, and basically what you do, I think, is what he's referring to. So he has a background in, in oil painting, but he wants to sort of transition to yeah. digital? Like, right, okay. Um, so should he put together a digital portfolio? Uh, Yes, I think, you know, if you want to, especially if you want to work in like the entertainment field, um, I think just being able to do things digitally is so fast that, I don't know, like it, it'd be a pretty tough sell to to take a, like a portfolio of oil paintings to a company and just be like, yeah, I can do an oil painting for you guys, it's going to take me a week or something, right? Like, even though the result, you know, probably looks better, I think a lot of these companies, they, they just want art like really fast, like really fast turnarounds. And so digital can really help with that. Um, but the good news is, is that everything that he's learned in uh, oil painting will transfer over to digital painting, right? Um, like, I wish I had a better oil painting background. Um, you know, I wish I did a lot more traditional art before I jumped into digital, because I thought, I, you know, I think that, that would help me a lot. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I think spending some time just learning some digital tools, um, you know, and putting together just maybe just a handful of, of uh, digital images just to show that you're proficient at it and, and uh, you know, you can do it, what they ask, then, uh, yeah, I think that's definitely something I would look at doing, yeah. Um, and, sorry, there's a second part to that question, too? Oh, I think, I th I think uh, I think he pretty much ans answered it. Um, he basically okay. was asking like, what would be the best way to like break in and approach a studio? Um, you know, with that right. with that being said, but I, I think right. you're you're right with practicing digital and applying your skill from you know oil painting to digital because it's it's basically kind of the same theory. It's think, just learning the yeah. tools of the of the uh, like Photoshop or whatever program. Yeah, the theory's all the same. Um, I think he was asking too about how to get work, was that right? Or how to like how to approach companies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean the best the best way is uh, you know, just to build, I guess, an online presence, you know, and just sort of get your work out there. That's step number one. Um, you know, having a a website to show off your portfolio or just any one of those 
those uh, free websites uh, like ArtStation or, or whatever, um, those are those are all good. Um, uh, yeah, any, anywhere that you can get your work in front of like professional working artists is is, is awesome. Um, because then if they like it, they'll show their art director and they'll be like, hey, check this guy's stuff out, you know. Um, maybe even like splurge and go to like one of those conventions and just walk around with your portfolio and show it to some art directors and stuff like that. I mean, it could generate some work that way too. But uh, yeah, I mean, these days like a lot of it is just, it's just having, you know, an online presence and just making sure people see your stuff. And if it's, if it's cool, like it's going to rise to the top, right, you know. It's going to get popular, and people are going to be like, "Check this guy's stuff. Well, it's great, you know." So, I think that's. Uh, that's I think that's one of the go. like nowadays. I think it's one of the most important things to do is to be, like, prolific with putting your stuff out there because there's a lot of great artists, but I feel like a lot of them aren't even seen because of that. Just because of that factor. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, I also say like. Maybe don't uh, like you know. Make sure you're putting your best foot forward too. You know, like you might have work from a few years ago that you're tempted to post up that maybe is from school or something like that. But you know, it's, it's always it's always a good idea just to like really critique yourself and make sure you're always putting your best stuff online, right? Because mm -hmm. you're usually judged by the worst piece that you show, right? <laughs> For some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just make sure you, you know you're showing your top stuff. Cool. For sure. Um, someone asked, uh, was Boris an influence on your work? Boris? Uh, not really. More like Frazetta, I think. I don't know. Maybe my stuff was more like Boris. I'm not sure. But I really like Frazetta stuff. Like, I find it's a little more dynamic. Yeah. Um, I mean, Boris stuff is cool. Like, it looks really realistic. Um, but I think, like, lately, I've been trying to push a little bit more stylized with my stuff, um, maybe a little bit more simpler, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that kind of lends itself more to painting action, um, so we're not getting bogged down in details. That yeah, stuff, so. yeah, that, uh, that being said, uh, what, what do you get stuck on when, you, when you're painting? And I know that you end up getting stuck a bit more if something is more detailed and you end up focusing on it and forgetting other things, at least that's kind of what I experience, but can, can right. you, you know, maybe say what what kind of stumps trips, you sometimes yeah <laughs> your uh, trips. trips me up or whatever <laughs> yeah um hmm. you know a lot of times like I'll, I'll find myself like just changing poses over and over and over again you mm -hmm. know like I'll just draw a pose and then like do some rendering on it and I'll just be like oh no I gotta, I gotta change this leg or I change this arm and, and so like I'll do that a lot like I'll just repaint over and over and over again like poses till I get something I'm happy with you know, like this one here of the guy shooting, you know, like his pose was like way different at the beginning. Like he was, he had his back turned to the camera, like his legs were different. And it's just like, you know, that's just part of the process, I guess, for me. It's just kind of not being afraid to, to destroy what you have to get something better, you know. Um, it doesn't always work, but I think just having that mentality that, you know, it's not, Nothing in your painting should be precious enough that you, you couldn't get rid of it at any time, you know, mm -hmm. and replace it with a better idea. Um, so I found myself definitely repainting poses a lot. Um, uh, stuff like character expressions and that. Like sometimes when I work, I feel like I'm almost like an animator, like moving the the body around and getting the the uh, the pose right and the expression right and and just trying to capture certain moments, right? Um, <clears throat> I mean, lighting and stuff is something that that trips a lot of people up, but I find that usually the lighting in my scenes are pretty simple. Um, you know, it's just like a, either a top light or like a like a standard kind of three quarters with like a little kicker or something. Like I, don't, I don't do a lot of like crazy lighting situations, and I should probably push myself harder to do that, but like a lot of the concept stuff I do is just pretty simple lighting. You know, it's just like an easy setup, so like I know I'm trying to figure like I've already sort of memorized in my head like where the lights and shadows should uh, generally fall, um, so that kind of speeds it up for me. Um, what else trips me up? Uh, actually, another thing like I spend a lot of time on is just color. Like I find like like I I almost never like start with like a with, like a pre-arranged palette of of what I think is going to end up 
with. Like I'll just I'll develop the colors as I go. Like I usually start some, with something very uh, uh, like desaturated or even black and white, and then I'll kind of like work color into it over time, and it just sort of builds. Um, so yeah, it's pretty it's pretty rare that I'll like have a like a really defined image in my head that I go and capture. Like for me, it's like I'm more I'm I'm more like discover the the image through the process of actually painting it. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. No, it does. <coughs> That's awesome. Um, I have a really random question. Uh, yeah. Have you ever, um, with your other artist friends, have you ever played the squiggle game where you draw like a random line and you make something out of it, and then it turns into like a whole piece? Yeah, I used to do that sometimes, like in <laughs> high school and stuff. Yeah, um, it seems like really, um, yeah. really fun practice for just visualizing like art. Yeah, it is fun. It's a totally fun little art game. Um, I haven't done lately, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. It'd be cool. I think that's one thing I want to do more of is like more like collaborations, you know? Yeah. I think you get some really cool, interesting results. Have you uh, worked with anybody uh, in particular on anything yet, or has it all just been you like just doing uh, conceptual, like visual development type type stuff? Uh, you mean like a specific project or like a yeah, an like art um, like an art collaboration for like a like a piece that you uh, that um, you and and, and may, maybe another person worked on. Yeah, not too much. Um, I, there was one uh, project I did for uh, Blur Studios, um, which was like a pitch they were doing, um, and I and I brought in a friend of mine to help out, and uh, we collaborated on, on a lot of those pieces together, which was like a lot of fun. Um, that was a few years ago now, uh, so I haven't really done anything lately. I'm mostly, it's just been yeah, just myself, just sitting here painting. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so these are some uh, Conan covers that are. They should be coming out soon. Cool. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, this is a this is like an old image from uh, from EA. Uh, one of the first games I worked on there was called Def Jam. It's like a wrestling game. Oh my gosh! Starring Def Jam recording artists. I'm sure you played it. <laughs> I think I think I totally remember <laughs> that. Um, I used to work for EA, so I think cool. I think I've yeah. seen that in the in the EA store. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, there's a lot of personal art here too. Like all this stuff here is this is all personal. It's just I really I like, like that. to That's awesome. whenever I have time, like I'll just, you know, sit down and try and paint something and I I actually find like most of my best stuff just comes out of just personal you know, Like playing and stuff, yeah. Your environment yeah. work is really good. Um do you have like a like a specific like different workflow for generating your environments and mechs and stuff? I mean I'm sure you do, but like thanks. You, um, ha you also have really well-rounded uh, figures and stuff, so that's that's really important. Yeah, I mean, do, do both. the biggest like the biggest question I usually get asked is, do you do environments? You know, like yeah. <laughs> but because uh, I do so much figure work, um, but I actually really like doing environments. Um, they kind of present like a whole different level of challenges, you know. And and admittedly, I don't do them as much as figures, so for me, it's kind of like a refreshing break, right? Um, yeah. The way that I approach it is pretty similar, um, although, you know, initially I might start off a little bit different. Like, um, I might start off with like a like a photo plate or something like that, and just paint on top. Um, just little tricks that I've picked up from watching like you know Dylan Cole DVDs or whatever. Cool. Um, and just to get like a feeling of space, you know, or like render out like a few uh, gray blocks and sketch up or something like that, and mm -hmm. then just start painting over top. Um, because I mean, the perspective is you know pretty crucial in, in those in those environmental pieces. So you want to kind of get that nailed early, early on. Um, but then you know after that, the workflow is generally the same. You know, I just I start very desaturated and I, I work up the image. Um, one thing that that's a little bit different is there's usually more layers involved in the environmental piece. I find you know. Oh yeah. Because you want to kind of break it up so you can control it and. And uh, move things around, and there's there's a lot more moving pieces, I guess. Right. When you're doing like a when you're doing just like a soldier standing there with a gun, um, I don't know. It seems like a lot easier for me to manage, right? Mm -hmm. But when there's like a soldier and two tanks, and then like jets and all this stuff, and yeah, it becomes like a big production, right? So 
yeah, there's more moving parts for sure. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you I have a, a specific question about your Photoshop process. Um, do you, you do you use a lot of layers and merge as you go, or do you do you, um, do you do you tend to stay strictly on certain layers, or like is it very like how how do you roll with that? Uh, yeah, it depends on uh, who the image is for. Um, if I'm doing like uh, like some client work or something like that, and I know that they're going to be asking for changes and like oh we want this character over here now and that kind of stuff, then I usually try and keep everything just separated, right? Because it's it's a lot more, you know, it's easier on yourself, right? You're not going to mm -hmm. waste like all these hours repainting certain things, and I mean, you can just move it over. Um, <clears throat> it, that way of working, like I find, a lot more tedious as well, because you know you're managing layer sets, and you have to like make sure you're on the right layer of painting, and and all that kind of stuff, right? And naming your layers and everything, and you have to be more organized. Um, for personal work, I find that um, I'm a little bit more relaxed about it. I'll just I'll start off with like one layer and just sort of like you know knock something in, and I can just be a little bit more loose and free, and it doesn't matter because you know I'm my own art director, so I can just change whatever I want. Um, you know, and I might I might start separating things if I want if I want a little bit more control or if I want to like um, you know make sure certain elements are, are separated off the background so I can paint easily or something like that, but I'm definitely less like anal about it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'll just, I'll just, uh, yeah, like I'll often go through and I'll, when I'm happy with how everything looks, I'll just flatten the entire thing, you know, and then just start painting on top of it. Um, I try not to keep a whole bunch of layers just for no reason, I guess. Right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it just becomes like a management issue, you know, yeah. you spend so much time just managing layers, it's like, Man, I could just be painting right now. <laughs> exactly, it becomes kind of a hindrance. Yeah. Um, so someone yeah. asked, uh, how how big and like what pixel dimensions do you usually use for your work? Mm. Um, yeah, they've gone up over time. Uh, when I started, when I started doing a lot of the stuff. It was uh, um, actually pretty small by like today's standards. Like this image here with the dinosaur and stuff. Like this is maybe like two thousand pixels across or something. Like it's pretty small. Like Compared to nowadays, like people are painting like you know seven, eight, nine k images, you know horizontal. Mm -hmm. like, that's that's crazy. Um, but I generally, uh, you know, as big an and <clears throat> sorry, as big an image that my computer can get away with. That's what I'll try and use. Um, and when I start a sketch, it's usually like around twenty five hundred to three k, and then I might up res as I as I render. Um, so they might end up at about, I don't know, maybe like 5K across, you know, for one of my bigger ones, I guess. I try not to go too big just because I find like um, it can really start slowing down, right? Like, mm -hmm. especially if you start using like like the blur tool or something like that. Oh, like God. Certain, fil <laughs> certain filters. You're just sitting there waiting for the update and like your whole process will just come to like a standstill. And or crash. That to me just like yeah, it just ruins it, right? Like yeah. I really want to be able to like, you know, just have a nice free flowing kind of kind of feel to the work. So, um, like a lot of these life paintings are pretty small. Like this one's maybe two thousand across, I think, and that's just because the laptop is you know it's not that great and just can't handle uh, like super high res images. But I mean it's fine, you know, like that resolution. That's pretty much all you need. You know, you're just going to post online anyway, so that's just going to be a pretty small image. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if you got the hardware, you definitely want more pixels. That's for sure. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, do you uh, do you use Photoshop only, or do you use um, any other type of like digital painting program, like like uh, Sketch, um, like oh, SketchUp, like, stuff? Or, like yeah, like Corel Painter or something. Uh. Yeah, for painting, I pretty much um, just exclusively use Photoshop. Um, it's just, yeah, something I've just gotten used to over the years, and I find it's like the fastest uh, and most elegant, I guess, software painting solution for me. Like, I started on, uh, I started on Painter. You know, <clears throat> that's how I learned to uh, to paint digitally was was I think Painter Seven or something like that. And uh, you know, I used that for a few years, but I found that. You know, it was a little bit buggy and it and uh, 
crashed quite often and stuff like that. So I just kind of naturally started to transition to more and more Photoshop, and and now it's pretty much all I use. Um, in terms of like other software, I'll, I'll use stuff like um, like ZBrush now and then, um, or SketchUp uh, if I need like a, some kind of like quick uh, 3D model to paint over. Um, you know, if you're if you're doing like a, like a guy's sword or like a machine gun or something, mm -hmm. you know, you can just quickly like render out a few blocks in ZBrush and just like you know copy paste it into Photoshop and just paint right over top of it, and your perspective's all done and it's it's pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, SketchUp, uh, ZBrush. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I use. That's kind of it. Um, Maya, like now and then, but not not really too often. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, used, I used to use like more 3D stuff when I started because I like I came from, <clears throat> from a 3D background, so I would like sometimes like model characters a little oh, cool. bit in like whatever package I was using and then bring over to Photoshop and paint on it and and it would have like a lot more 3D elements but uh, but now it's pretty much uh, I would say you know 95% Photoshop was just you know every now and then I'll I'll do an object in ZBrush or SketchUp and bring it over well that's cool because I'm lazy because <laughs> I'm lazy and I don't want to do perspective <laughs> Yeah, it can it can be kind of daunting, like uh, to go from something so freeform to doing stuff like um, like intricate mechanisms and like it's I don't know I I understand I do it all the time too because I also know how to do three. <laughs> um, yeah. But yes. also, I mean, I mean, it's a tool. So, and if you know how to use it, that's just that's just awesome. <laughs> it depends a lot on like what you're doing too, right? Like yeah, like I. I usually, if I'm drawing like a character like an action pose or something, like I, I almost always just do it in Photoshop because to me like drawing the gesture and like drawing the character is a lot more fun. You get more life in Photoshop than you would like making like a Zed Sphere little man in Zed Brush and then posing him, you know, and then like getting the lighting right and the camera right and taking more to Photoshop and then it just, it always ends up looking stiff, right? Um, but yeah, for certain things it's great, you know, for hard surface things or if you have props or if you're doing environments and you need buildings, it's great. So the way I look at it is, you know, it's just another tool in your, in your toolbox and you want to have a, as big a toolbox as you can so you can always draw draw from it what you need to do your to do your image. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, yeah. So we have about 15 minutes left. Um, did you want to jump into Photoshop and have some fun and show us some stuff? Sure. Or? Okay, awesome. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And we can go a little over too. I'm not I'm not too fussed about the time. So cool. if you guys uh Yeah. And anytime if you have any Photoshop questions or questions about what I'm doing, just yeah, feel free. Sorry, my Photoshop is a little bit laggy, I guess, because of the, the screen sharing. But Oh yeah, it'll it'll lag a bit. Hopefully um you'll you won't lose connection. <laughs> yeah, that seems okay so far. Cool. Um um, is there anyone out there that was in uh, Clayton's uh, interview with us? I'm just curious. Because <laughs> that, that was sad. Oh, we have a few people. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, really sorry about that, by the way. <laughs> I hope this one's a, a, little, a little better as far as the connection goes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we don't have a lot of time, but I'll just see if... Uh, I can just show you how to start something. Or cool. Let me just start doing something. I don't know. We'll see here. I don't think I've seen that. That must be a custom brush, I guess. I have never seen that, that rectangular. That's yeah, that's really cool for plotting uh, out depth. Yeah, I know. It's just a, just a regular square kind of brush. I think it comes with Photoshop, but I'm not sure. I mean, it's really easy to make. Yeah. That's for sure. Okay, so. Really. I don't know what I'm doing at this point. Just I don't know. Let's see what's going on here. So, <clears throat> also the way I have it uh, set up here, um, I have a Cintiq. Uh, I'll show you. Got like a Cintiq here. That I draw on, and then below it, I have like a Wacom tablet, so I can just kind of oh, like wow. switch between the two, depending on <clears throat> what I need to paint, right? Uh, so I'll, I'll just be constantly like kind of alternating back and forth between between the uh, the Cintiq and the uh, and the tablet. 
Okay, let's see. So I'm just kind of like playing around blocking in looks like a figure, but like I said before, like my process can change so much that this pose is probably going to be way different if I ever were to take this all the way to final, right? Like <laughs> this, is, this is just like the initial thoughts, you know, almost just like a thumbnail stage. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, okay, what, what are we actually going to make, you know? Um, someone's asking about um, how you handle your values, and mm -hmm. they're saying that they have a tendency of getting too high of value too quickly. And mm. Yeah, yeah. I usually try and paint sort of from like a, like a mid-value or like a mid-dark value, like outwards on the value scale. So I'll like try and save like the super nice punchy highlights until like the very last, you know, or like the, or like your dark darks until like the very last. Um, you know, in this case I got like a pretty bright background, but it's because I, I sort of know that I want the figure to be a little bit darker, I think, in, in the end. Um, if the background's really bright, that's going to make the figure darker. Um, even if it's like a mid-tone, right, it's just going to read a little bit darker. Uh, okay, getting way too noodly. Let's see. Okay, I'm just going to switch to this antique for a second. It's pretty so cool how you switch between then. So that's so interesting. Yeah, you may notice, like, sort of like using more lines now, and that's mm -hmm. because on the Cintiq, it's much easier to draw, to draw like accurate lines quickly, um, and to use your wrist if you need yeah. to. I don't think I've heard of anyone doing that before. That's really cool. <laughs> I'm a trailblazer. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know. It's just something that I, I started doing and I kind of liked it. So, um, so yeah, like a sword or something. I don't know. Right now, everything's on one layer, but if I were to like go farther with this, like I would definitely start breaking it up a little bit. Like I would probably throw the sword on like a different layer. You know, like um, anything that's like overlapping a lot is usually something that that'll get its own layer. Um, but it really depends how far you know you're going to take something. Uh, this pose kind of sucks, but oh well. I think it looks cool. <laughs> do you do a, Do you ever do like a time lapse, um, like time lapse images of your of your work? Uh, yeah, I've like messed around with it a little bit, like just recording myself like painting in like Camtasia or something. Um, it's pretty fun because then you can like sort of see the whole ugly process as it unfolds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of like look at like what you're doing, like, you're like, oh, why am I doing that? And you know, like, why am I spending so much time on this area? This is so unimportant. And mm -hmm. you can sort of give yourself like really, uh, really critiques that way. Yeah, I'm sure it kind of puts things in perspective too for you because you can like, I guess when you're drawing, you get caught up in the moment and you don't really pay attention to what you're doing as much. So it's good to. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You sort of like start questioning like what you're doing, you know, you're like, okay, why did I pick this certain pose or like, you know what I mean? And like that, that stuff is pretty valuable. So sort of reflect on like what you're doing. Yeah, so like this sword here for for instance, like I might what I might do is just like take it and just like lift it off the surface, right? So It's the most boring sword design in the world, but that's okay. 
Just grab that. Pop it off. Yeah, I'll just have it sit on its own layer for now, just so I can paint behind it. Um, to get this that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> to get no, that highlight on the sword, um, did you did you just lock the um the color transparency, or did you do like a quick mask? Oh yeah, I just uh, when I lifted it onto its own layer, I just locked the pixels. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah. Up. The other thing I've been sort of experimenting a lot with is uh, like layer, oops, uh, layer groups, and uh, they can be pretty good for controlling your sketches too. And I'll show you that in a second. I'm just gonna do a couple adjustments here. I do like a lot of like little tiny adjustments like that, um, like all throughout the process. You know, I find like little, like little changes in angles um, in the way like the figure sits can really have a pretty big impact on just the way it feels. You know, just sort of like the emotion that's coming through. Um, and of course, the other thing is like the actual design of the figure. You know, like what shapes you're using and that kind of stuff that that has a big impact too. Um, but right now, it's just I really want to sort of get some kind of gesture that I like down. Um, I have some people asking about your presets. Um, yes. They're wondering why you have so many, but I think it's part of the program. <laughs> um, but I don't know. But I never use them. <laughs> but you know, you have a lot, but it doesn't look like that there is some being used. But I think that's just how Photoshop sets it up um, initially, and you just click the ones you want. Uh, no, these are all ones I made. Um, oh, I see on the left. Okay, I was looking at your brush. Yeah, or, or do you mean these ones? Here? I, 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 he, he was mentioning the tool preset, actually. <laughs> the tool I was, presets, yeah. I was looking at the wrong window. Yeah, those are all just presets that I've kind of just made on my own. Um, it's just if I find like a certain brush is working in a certain way and I like it, I'll just I'll be like, oh, I better save this. And then, you know, inevitably, I'll like never use it again. But it's there if I ever want it. So. <laughs> If you ever need awesome. to paint that grass again. That's really cool, though. That's really important. Having like yeah, a, can, just a giant tool set of, of stuff. It can be nice, because like, say I want to, I'm like, OK, I just need some, some really shitty clouds. I can just pick my, my cloud brush and be like, whoop, you know? Okay, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, instead of trying to sit there and make a cloud brush and stuff, it's just, you know, I just save it up. Saves time. Um, yeah, so the thing I was talking about earlier about the layer masks or the uh, grouping and stuff like that. So one thing I like to do is, um, so I'll take the figure and I'll just flatten the sword. Or I'll just copy it. OK. And I'll just take this and select it all. Oops, sorry, bear with me for a second. So I just duplicated that layer a bunch of times to get rid of the transparency. And I'm just going to throw it into its own uh, uh, layer group. Uh, so I always forget. Control uh, here we go. No, I got an action set up for it. So oh, you have an action. Cool. There we go. Awesome. So it throws into a layer group. Cool. And I can take this image that I copied, stick it in there. OK. So this is cool, because now you can start to uh, carve out silhouette and uh, paint within the group just all at once, right? So if I want, I can start doing this, where like I'll just make layers within the group. You know? I can start making kind of big value decisions. Sweet. You see, there's some, there's some garbage up top there, but we can easily get rid of that. You know, and then you can just go to the silhouette. 
and start. What I'll do is I'll select like a really hard brush and just start knocking out the silhouette. That's really cool. Yeah, I think that's what makes this this program in particular so strong is that like I feel like you you have so much more flexibility in different ways to change your your image than you would using like you know Corel or you know a different you know I use Manga Studio and I can't I don't have nearly a, as much as flexibility as you get in Photoshop. Yeah, Especially just a lot layers. of power. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, when you get all the tools working together, it becomes really powerful, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just painting the mask, right? So like it's all non-destructive, you know. So like if I were to like, you know, go here and like add, uh, I don't know, some kind of pattern or something, like uh, let's see, do 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 do. I don't know. Like uh, just as an example, like, oops. that you know it's it's all there you know you're just painting the mask and it's you just get a lot of control you know mm -hmm. um, actually I'm just gonna get rid of that because that's ugly I'm just gonna go back around and ground a little bit better. This guy's really simplistic, sorry, but <laughs> no, it <laughs> looks, quick. looks awesome. Thanks. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's great for a quick little demo. Yeah. Uh, so we're just kind of just still working on basically just the shapes, you know, like this is a good way to just figure out, you know, what shapes are making your figure out. And uh can find little areas to like add interest and play with it in like a non-destructive manner, right? Mm -hmm. um, what I also might do is start adding a little bit of color at this at this stage, just a tiny bit, just to sort of uh, get rid of some of that deset uh, look to it. But first, I'm just gonna just gonna get these legs working. Yeah, so let's see here. I'll just add a quick. I like to do color with uh, curves usually. Cool. So I'll just take my curves. Do, 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 do. Uh, come on. Sorry, the lag is like making the windows disappear. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So then, you know, what you can do is just, uh, you know, for example, if you want the image a little bit, a little bit more yellow, you can just take down the blues, right? Oh, that's cool. I never oh, use the okay. curves, so this is this is good. <laughs> they they actually do the same, the exact same things like like using like a color balance or something like that. Oh, that's what I use. The difference color. is, the difference is, is that you just have a little bit more control, you know. Yeah, that's really just cool. A more precision. Um, so I'll just take that. That's good. And uh, oops. I'm just going to copy that and stick it in the background, too. Do you use adjustment layers more than anything uh, as far as, like, when you're doing your base colors and stuff? Yeah, adjustment layers work really well, too. Um, I mean, that's what a curve is, right? Yeah. It's just a, just a type of adjustment layers. Um, yeah, they're, they're great for just doing little tweaks and all kinds of stuff. Um, I really like to use them to like suck out, you know, saturation out of the image if I need to or stuff like that. Um, so now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna flatten everything within that layer group. So I'm, I'm not painting with the curves on. So I'm just gonna flatten it all down. And you can see like where the silhouette is, right? Where I'm just moving it around. Mm -hmm. So it's nice because it you gives you a lot of control. And if you want to move the figure, you can just select the group and just pop them over here or something, you know. Oh, we have someone yeah. in chat uh, saying thank you very much for doing this demo, um, Jamal. Oh, you're welcome. He, he wanted to see you do it for a long time, so he's happy. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, you're totally welcome. Uh, 
Oops. Oops. So let's see. Let's do this. I know I'm like I'm kind of looking at the figure and I'm thinking, oh, maybe I want to change it a little bit. So what I'll usually do if I need to make a change is I'll just I'll actually just blow away the group, right? I'll just take the take whatever's in the group, copy merged, and then get rid of the group. And so now I'm just working on like a fresh a fresh layer. Um, and I can start like messing around with it now. Like, okay, I want to change. Let's see what I want to change. Maybe a shield. Uh, yeah, like maybe a shield isn't like a mess. Maybe it's actually like a circle. So, let's take a circle. Pop that in. So we don't need. Oops. It's actually a little slow, so I'm just going to resize the image. It's pretty small. Hmm. Hmm. Is it because the stream? One, one thing with the. Uh, it could be the stream. Um, it's also uh, uh, layer groups also slow down your computer quite a bit. They're really oh. intensive, especially if you have more than one. Um, so that's just good to know. Okay. Still not really happy with this, this guy, so we're just going to mess with him a little bit. Do, 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 do. Of course, like none of these colors are final, you know, in any way, shape, or form. They're just kind of there as a base for me to work on, um, and hopefully they'll start getting more refined as I as I go through the process. Color is like one of the easiest things to manipulate in in uh, Photoshop, so I don't, I don't really worry about it too much. Like I, I'm more concerned about getting like uh, like a nice a nice fast value read, right? Like just making sure everything sort of looks good, you know, the very first time that you look at it, um, and that you're not sort of scratching your head wondering where you should look or you know what this certain area is. Um, I'm just going in with some. Sort of like a darker brush just to kind of put in some of these shadows and make things pop a little more. Is there any other questions or anything? Oh, nope. I think everyone's no. just watching. <laughs> I think everyone's kind of okay. mesmerized. I'm sitting here watching you like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really cool okay. to watch the process. Um, cool. I, I enjoy I enjoy watching uh, people work. So yeah, everybody works differently. So yeah, it's interesting. It's nice to pick up things. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I would say, uh, or would you say that val like understanding value is probably one of the more important um, aspects oh, totally. of doing this stuff. Yeah, absolutely, and it's something that like I feel like I'm only just you know, the last few years starting to really get a grasp on, you know, like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it takes a while to sort of, to really understand it and figure out um, how to design the value. Um, yeah, it's not easy for sure, especially if you come from like a background where you're just using lines all the time, you know, mm -hmm. like a lot of line work, um, and yeah, it can, it can be a challenge for sure. Play around with this foot a little bit. 
are you uh, are you changing the opacity much in your brush as you go, or are you using kind of like a one hundred percent? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, um, I usually paint it one hundred percent. But what I'll do is like I'll I'll switch my brush between like a uh, this, which is like just like a super hard brush with no uh, no Wacom sensitivity mm -hmm. to this, which is like pressure sensitive. Cool. And I find that helps. Um, depending on what you're painting, that can really that can really help. Like if you just want if you're painting like a silhouette of a shape um, or something like that, then using just a nice, you know, nice thick brush and you know, just like knocking a shape is really really fast. But if you were trying to do that with like a with like a standard brush with pressure sensitivity, you know, you sort of have to go over it a few times. The edges aren't as crisp, and it kind of looks a little bit more. Um, uh, Labored, I guess, mm -hmm. is a good word. Um, so yeah, but it depends what you're doing. If you want to do like, you know, some kind of blending or something like that, then obviously you want that. That uh, pressure sensitivity can be nice for sure. Um, do you so notice you get a lot of fatigue in your in your wrist at any point, or like, <laughs> do you have a good like setup for that? Like a. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a huge issue. With like digital art is like, you know, just like um, it's really hard on your body, you know, especially if you're um, if you're sitting all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's pretty horrible for you. Um, the wrist, especially, uh, gets it pretty bad. Like I, um, I did have like a lot of wrist pain at one point. Um, what I found helped was uh, uh, switching working methods. You know, like transferring to a Cintiq. Um, actually help quite a bit, just because you're using your arm in a different way, um, as opposed to like drawing on the tablet all day, right? Where your mm -hmm. your arm is just kind of like in a in a weird kind of static lock position. Uh, so that definitely helped. And um, what else? Uh, yeah, I mean stuff like doing stretches and stuff. Like everybody should be doing those. Um, also. Um, one thing that, that I found was awesome was uh, I recently got a uh, like a standing desk. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, and that that's awesome. That's because it's great. I mean, if you're if you're getting like a sore back or sore wrist or something, sitting down, you just you know you can just stand up for half an hour at work. Is know, it a? Can I ask if it's a convertible? Is it like a convertible stand up desk where you can bring it down and up, or is it just yeah. a? Oh, nice. Yeah, it's convertible, so uh, you can get like either kind. You know, you can get the if you just prefer standing, you can get one of those. But um, yeah, the convertible ones are nice because during the day you can just kind of take little standing breaks, right? Mm -hmm. And it's uh, yeah, it's it's a lot better for your for your body, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I know a lot of my friends have uh, you know, dealt with a lot of like wrist pain and lower yeah. back pain and that, that kind of stuff. It's no so fun. It's so bad for you. Um, yeah, yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> I know a lot of uh, a lot of people that have been just weightlifting and working out and stuff um, on the side of doing their art too, because it's just so taxing on your body just to sit there and like be in one spot. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got weights in my office. I'm sure I look like a total idiot, but <laughs> I'm just like in the middle of the day, I'll just start you know doing some exercises or something. Just right in the middle of my studio, and but it, it's great. Like it totally helps, just to move in a different way and get your, you know, get your blood flowing. I guess. Yeah, I think that's a lot of thing that a lot of things that uh, like artists forget about is to move and take care of your body because, like that can also in, like hinder your ability to focus and, you know, kind of work mm -hmm. with a clear mind uh, and stuff like that. Oh so, yeah, absolutely. Because when you're young, like at least I know in my case, like I just wanted to like sit at the computer for hours, you know, on end and just mm -hmm. do it, you know, and I would do it even if like my wrist was sore or whatever, I didn't care, I just wanted to like paint, you know, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but that's not a good way to do things, so just, you'll just hurt yourself in the end, so, 
Yeah. Yeah. Once you get once you get older, it's, it just gets harder to do things <laughs> like that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, would you mind me asking how old you are? I'm just curious. Uh, thirty-eight. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Pretty ancient. You're not that ancient. <laughs> Getting up there. But yeah, I was a bit of a bit of a late bloomer, I guess, with art. Like I, I kind of started really taking it seriously, like in. 98, 99, something like that. Um, and then, I mean, I didn't go to school until I was 23. Wow. Um, so. That's not that. That's not that late, though. Uh, I think you, I really, think you did I mean, pretty good. <laughs> nowadays, like you know, so many kids are just in high school learning like Photoshop or something. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's such a. Common it just seems like everybody's though. getting younger. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was teaching Photoshop when I was a kid um, <laughs> in my high school because my, my art teacher didn't know how to use it, so I had to like show everyone. <laughs> but nice. but now it's like I feel like kids are just picking it up, like ZBrush yeah, well, too, and I'm just like, so oh my goodness. yeah, it's crazy. Because I remember how much I struggled with it, <laughs> and I'm like, man, oh, yeah. <laughs> how come you can pick it up? <laughs> I know. Like, I'm so jealous. If I was in high school now and I had these tools, like, compared oh, yeah. to what we had back then, it's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, so. I, I like so that old. brush. Get brush off my lawn. lawn. Get off my lawn, kids. <laughs> totally. That was just like airbrush. Something crazy. Uh, okay, I think I'm just going to quickly throw some. Yeah, I'm going to a little bit more color on here. Oh, so. God. Sorry. I'm, like, right next to a fire station. Oh, God. No problem. So I'm just gonna do the same layer group trick again. Let's see, if you take that, and uh, I'm just gonna bring it down. It's a little, it's a little too, too light. Oops. Do you do anything digital, or I'm sorry, traditionally anymore? Uh, the only thing I do is like draw in a sketchbook. That's, oh, okay. that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, I tried tried getting into like oil painting briefly, um, but yeah, it just doesn't work in like a small yeah. apartment. And also, it's expensive, <laughs> isn't it? Like just a lot of super money. Super expensive. Yeah, super expensive, and it like stinks the place up. And, oh, it stinks. I, oh, I didn't know it stank. Well, it depends what you use as like a as a medium or whatever. Oh right. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's just I don't know. For me, it's like if I'm using Photoshop all day. Like I kind of just want to be really good at Photoshop, you know. I think you kind of are really good at Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, so I, there's I always get... more to learn. <laughs> I don't know. There's there's lots of guys out there that are just crazy, crazy good. So I'm always still trying to learn stuff. That's good, that's good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so just quick color, pass, let's see. I don't know, reds maybe? Is it a different color picker? Like, is, it just um, looks well different can, to me. You can actually uh, set which color picker you want. Oh, okay. Um, so I have it set to like the, I think it's called the hue strip, um, but you can set one that's like a, um, it's more like a color wheel if you want. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's just uh, I think it's in the preferences. You can do that. Cool. Uh, so, let's see, whoops. I got a blue sword. I don't know why it's sorts, but whatever. Um, Maybe it's like lightning infused. <laughs> it gets its power from the storms. It could be. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice just to like stick a crazy color down and then like paint over top of it. Mm -hmm. Just to get like a little bit of that color kind of bleeding through. 
Um, let's see if I can do that. Oops. <laughs> Just, <laughs> someone, in the, someone in the chat is like, orcs are near. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> kind of failed, but whatever. Try not to get too hung up on you know, certain parts if they're not working or something. I'll just, I'll take a break. I'll go work on some other part of the image, you know, that I think needs, needs a little bit of attention. Um, this brush is kind of needs got some texture in it. Yeah, it looks really cool. Looks like a crayon or chalk. Yeah. Uh, let's see, maybe just maybe need some kind of rim light or something. Oops. Is looking really cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, you look awesome. Sorry, I feel like I should be talking more, but I'm just. Uh, no, it's fine. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what to say. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, it's just kind of like sort of just refining what's there, I guess, and uh, you know, taking another look at the lighting and just making sure things are reading okay. Um, cool. Like a good, uh, a good thing to do is maybe just. You know, make a new window. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> uh, just make like a new window, and you can just like stick this on. If you have two monitors, stick this on your other monitor and just like, you know, zoom way up. Yeah. Make sure everything is kind of, uh -huh. you know, reading right. Do you do the thing where like you look away and then look back at it, or like walk yep. away from it and then come back? <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I'll probably. Walk away, come back, and it's gonna be like totally different. Like half an hour later, because like I won't like something. I do that all the time. Yeah. Um, Would you recommend doing that like every hour or thirty minutes or something into it? I would just do it whenever. Yeah. Um, it starts to feel stale, you know. Like if you're just kind of like making marks with no purpose. Mhm. Mm you know, then it's time to sort of reevaluate where you are. Um, you don't want to be in the situation where you're just sitting there like la di da di like just just scribbling on it just for no reason and then it just becomes like a random mess almost you know yeah um sort of like always have like a, like a a goal in mind i guess with what you're trying to what you're trying to show this guy's feeling pretty post apocalyptic yeah he looks a little mad maxi Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> some, uh, see me or something. Do you ever flip your canvas or anything, or like rotate it when you're doing stuff? Yep. Yeah, actually, I should I should be doing that more, but uh, yeah, like right, yeah, just there, like I saw, like his, uh, you know, like his shield's like way too close to the edge, so I'm just gonna pop him over a little bit. Um, I've never seen those uh, pink uh, pink guides before. Are those those are those like smart guides or like? Uh... Yeah, um, I think they're new in uh, in Photoshop CC. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not exactly even sure what they they are. They just show like the boundaries of your what's a, whatever's on your layer, I think. Oh, cool. Kind of kind of like smart guides. Um, 
Do they get in the yeah. way or they just there to help? I don't know. I'm sure there's a way you can probably snap to them if you need yeah. to, but I just I haven't really got into that part yet. Oops. <laughs> Shield is like a big piece of poo, so I'm just going <laughs> to see. Hmm. I'll do stuff like this all the time. I'll just be like, oh, I, I don't think you should have this. And try something else. Like, if you want to try something, just I just make a layer and, you know, basically just experiment. It's, if I don't like it, I can always just get rid of it, right? It's no big deal. Yeah. Especially if it's on another layer. You just go back to the yeah. original if you wanted. Yeah, that's kind of the great thing about Photoshop. You can just do whatever you want and nothing's permanent, so... It's not a big deal. That was sort cool. I think I like that better. Sort of thinking like space viking or something. Yeah. Okay. Wait, if he's a space viking, does he need a beard? Maybe. I don't know. But his face is so beautiful. <laughs> I'm like an epic, some kind of crazy epic beard. Oh my god, awesome. How are we doing on time? Uh, we're good. Uh, if you if you want to maybe wrap it up in about ten minutes, that would be sure. That would be probably good. Um, yeah, sure. I don't know. We don't we don't usually go over, but like, if uh, you know if the presenter wants, then he may have. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just checking. This is awesome, though. Oh, I was going to ask you. Um, do you think it'd be possible if we could uh, if we could have this image? Not like full size or anything, <laughs> but just to to show your your demo. Oh my God, you want this? Uh, I sure, like it. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's I cool. guess. Awesome. Okay. I'm just I'm just sure people would probably want to see the result. Um, the ones that that couldn't stick around. So that's you know. Sure. Yeah. If it's cool. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's uh, it's very quick and dirty, but sure you can have it. Woo! -hoo. Okay, now this blue stuff kind of makes sense. Maybe he's, uh, he's got fucking space shit. Whoa, is it like, you think it's, it might be like Mad Max Thor? Whoa. Just kidding, he doesn't have a hammer. <laughs> I forgot he has a hammer. Hmm. That looks cool, man. Thanks. a little bit. <clears throat> okay, let's see, what can I do in a few minutes? Um, maybe some atmospherics. So we'll just add some clouds and dust and stuff. Um, there's some presets. There we go. Well, do you have a lightning brush? Lightning brush. Sure. <laughs> I got I got so many brushes and I never use like half of them. Oh wow. They just kinda sit there. Um let's see.
these are like runes or something, but I don't know what Viking runes look like. I'd have to look it up. Actually, that's another thing I should mention is like before you start anything, you probably want to do like at least a decent amount of research. You know, unless you're just doing something strictly for like personal enjoyment or whatever. Um, it's always good to like find reference and um, you know, <clears throat> just so you're not making the same mistakes over and over again and you can also see how other people solve problems and stuff like that. So it's a little more interesting. But in this case, it's like I'm sort of just figuring everything out on the fly, which is probably not what you want to do on like a on like a pain, you know, freelance job or something. Put more more time and energy into the front end, like researching and uh, mm -hmm. figuring out exactly what you're what you're going to paint. I'm thinking maybe some fur or something. Let's see. It's not bright. I like the accent lighting. That's really cool. The room lighting. Oh, thanks. It really makes a um, difference. Yeah, it can just pop out certain areas, or if you want the eye to sort of go somewhere, like in this case his head, it's a nice way to just add some contrast. Cool. I'm also not really worried too much about like the textures and stuff on the character. It's mainly at this point. I mean, it's just still a sketch, so mm -hmm. I'm really just trying to figure out like you know what it is I'm actually doing. <laughs> um, once I'm actually happy with it, then you know all that stuff can get cleaned up and yeah, it can make it look pretty. But cool. How like long do you now, uh, how long do you think each one takes you to do like each one of these like um, character? Shots. Character pieces? Um, yeah. I don't know, maybe like a, if I want to take it like all the way to some kind of crazy finished version, maybe, uh, you know, two to three days at the most. Cool. Um, but I mean, that, that might just be for like one character standing there or something. But if you're doing something more complicated, then, you know, the time goes up accordingly. Um, some of those... Uh, <clears throat> Like this uh, stuff that I did for um, Games Workshop, like a couple of those uh, Warhammer covers with like all the Marines and everything. Mm -hmm. Those can take quite a while because they they tend to like a lot of detail on on their characters and you know detailing out thirty Marines. Whoa! Take some time, yeah. So. <laughs> I would admit. Oh my gosh, that must be crazy. Wow. Oh yeah, I totally forgot he was flipped the other way. 
I think I yeah, like I mean, it better this way. You don't want to go crazy with detail because you'll, you'll never get it done, but um, you got to have enough in there that the client's happy. And like, for some reason, the clients seem to love detail. Oh yeah. Um, that's one thing I'm trying to get away from in my work is like over detailing stuff and like, you know, just making it look too fussy, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard, you know, when everybody. When everybody asks for detail, that's kind of what you have to give them if, uh, if that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, I could keep going or we could stop. It's, well, uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, okay. So, yeah, it was it was wonderful having you. This is fantastic. You're amazing. And thank you so much for spending time with us today and showing us your demo. It's really inspiring. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah anytime. Thank, thanks very much. <laughs> cool. Um, and as a That's reminder great. to everyone, uh, we're going to be doing registration starting uh, July 3rd for CJMA Online Academy. So please um, check out our classes and sign up if you want to get in for the summer term. And uh, thank you again to conceptartworld.com for sponsoring this. And if you guys want to check out um, Daryl's stuff, Check out his website. Um, it should be linked on the webinar. And what's your website, uh, Daryl? Is it DarylMandrick.com or? Uh, it's www.MandrickArt.com. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. check it out. Yeah, there go. Good stuff. Um, and thank Great. you so much. Thank you to everyone. Okay. Thanks for having me. And, Bye, uh, Daryl. Thanks so much. You guys uh, got something <laughs> out of it. Thanks. <laughs> All right. See you. Okay. Take care.